What up guys, got some bad news. It's the reason why you ain't really been seeing as many videos is uh, my shoulder's messed up. Got uh, some messed up tendons in my shoulder, causing numbness in my hand, can't really feel things sometimes. So I gotta let that rest and get healthy. So I don't know how long I'll be out for. It could be a month, it could be two weeks, who knows. But I got somebody very special who's got a lot of knowledge about fishing in general. And I'm about to introduce y'all to him in a minute. All right, guys, if y'all don't know who that is, you can follow him on Fish Brain. His name is Swamp Stomp. I'm gonna put it on the screen right here or in the descriptions. That is George. He used to be a guide in Delacro. Catch a lot of bass, uh, came in second twice in the City Park Bass Tournament and third once. Uh, dude catches fish all the time. Just check out the Fish Brain, y'all gonna see him. But this is pretty much who you're gonna be seeing for the time being on the channel. If y'all have seen him in the uh, Stump City Sockele video, I actually met him from YouTube, so. Well, I appreciate you having me take over for time being, man. And I'm doing my best to help you, help spread my knowledge to the people that watch the channel. What you gonna be using today? Well, I'm gonna try uh, start a step top board, switch over to Wapa Pop later on this afternoon, and see what happens. Try to catch some uh, bass chasing a fry with a fluke. You know, bass has been coming up hitting a lot of shad, so I'm gonna go ahead and try that rattle trap later on. Take long cast, crank it in pretty fast, and see if we can't get a reaction strike off of it. Got a little bit of overcast, a little bit of wind, ripple on the water, so that's probably the perfect bait to you know, try out today. So Let's see if we can't get one on the top border first, though. Get a little uh, excitement out of the deal. Oh, yeah, look at the wake. See it? That was a nice one, too. You give it a couple quick pops as soon as it hits the water like that. Then you let it sink a little bit and give it one or two twitches. And it looks like something, you know, dying, falling down. A lot of times you get a reaction strike out of that. It's actually one of the best masters. Isn't it Casey, Casey Ashley or something? Works a fluke like that. I think he won one on the tournament a little while back. It wasn't that fluke, real slow on the bottom. Throw it out there, like all the way down. You push it once or twice, let it sit again, all the way to the bottom, and just keep on repeating that. You feel that poop. That's what you want. There he is. There you go. Well, <laughs> a little fat. A little football. Well, got a good hook set on him. Huh? Perfect way to hook up a fluke, huh? That's it. That's how you work a fluke, huh? Yeah, you see it yourself, brother. There you go. People always complain about how the flukes tear off the line so easily and they hate using them, this and that. I don't like using the bait keeper hook simply because the larger profile takes away from the action. So instead, I use a regular offset shank hook, damn it, got through the yard, and when I bury it through the nose, I put a little dab of super glue, and it holds up really good. Well. Probably catch six or seven bass off of one fluke. I'll take that all day. Spike it markers, I suggest you get them. And depending on what color bait you use, it depends on what color you use to spike it with. I like to use the chartreuse on the belly. Some people put it a little bit on the tail tip, it matches the fluorescent color that the perch has on the tail. So my buddy James caught that 6.1 pounder yesterday. Orange bait or a tannish bait, I go with orange, so like a bluegill almost, you know. And I, it really works. And it's got a little extra added uh, scent to it, you know. So it draws the bite even even more. And then if I find it being an even tough day than it is today, you go with uh, a little number six rattle. You shove that in by the tail. And when the tail starts kicking, it make an extra little ticking noise. So that's all it is. And uh, it's tough to get in there, but once you get in there, you lock it in with some super glue so it don't come back out. And you'd be, you'd be amazed how many more bites you get. You know, especially on spawning beds. So basically, I mean, you gotta find a good spot to shove it in at. And I like to get in at a little rip right there, a rib. So just don't force it all in at once. Work it in little by little. And once you get it in there, make sure it doesn't make your bait all bulky throws the profile off because uh, I find that being bad. There you go. <laughs> Come off when he hit the bank, huh? That's how the swamp stomp it does it, too. There you go. Caught him on. A little hum dum digger. Hum dum dinger. <laughs> Just slow rolling, huh? Yeah. Probably had him on a trailer hook, too, don't you? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah, just let it go to the bottom that time. Let it sink and start thinking real slow on it. And uh, it it go down on the bottom. You don't see too much action on the water. There you go.
All right, guys. Well, I hope y'all learned something, and hopefully y'all like George. George is a very, very, very good fisherman. Knows a lot. Can definitely offer y'all a lot to teach y'all. And uh, hopefully we get one more frog blow up as he's throwing the sprinkler frog. Hopefully we can get another blow up. Been tough this afternoon. Had some uh, blow ups, but nothing took it. A lot of garfish, so.